Welcome to the Rusted Garden Homestead. In today's episode, I think it's 59, of Friday Morning Ramblings, going to talk about trellising, spraying, really go over the tomatoes, what I'm doing with those. It's been 11 days, things are growing really well. I wanna start over here, but first I wanna thank everybody that came out to Freetown Farm. Um, listen to Kim and I speak, I hope you enjoyed it. I had a wonderful time, I'm thinking about doing more of those in the future. This is also a video that's set up with donations. The donations go to the Community Ecology Institute, which is part of um, Freetown Farm. Actually, it's the Freetown Farm is an initiative of that program. This is a tomato plant that seeded itself. It's not getting sprayed, it's not getting fed. It's in my no-dig garden, so this is mostly compost. But I'm leaving it there for an experiment. No pruning, no disease management. It looks absolutely beautiful. And again, look how tall it is. It is something that I did not start inside. Nature did it. And that was the example I wanted to use that everything doesn't have to be as complicated as I make it up and others make it up, that you have to start stuff indoors. You only really do that if you want to get a jump on the season, you have a shorter season. But there's a perfect example of a tomato plant doing its own thing. Potatoes look good. I just put in four, eight, 12, 16 poblanos right in there, trying to use up the rest of my plants. Decided not to put melons in there because I'll show you inside. I have them in another place. Sweet potatoes in the middle, looking good. Everything over here is just really, really lush. Beans look good. That's the globe artichokes. And right in there, tucked in the back, are cucumber plants that started themselves. And they're doing really well with some shade. So, you know, maybe I'm learning something. I always continue to learn every month about gardening, even though I've been doing this for 30 years. So you're not supposed to know everything. Here's the garden. Sunflowers are in bloom. Mostly under control. I'm happy for July of where I'm at, where I'm at with, you know, weeds and, and managing everything. Still keeping open space in there. I'll be cleaning this up. I already moved one tower over to here. Just did a video on that with Kim. I want to thank Kim and Jerry for coming down for six days. We had a wonderful time. Love the tower. These are actually on sale. I think it's buy one and get one 60% off. I put that information in the video description. The Rusted Garden Red is a color um, just for me. It's sort of limited. We don't have any word on if we're going to do this again, but if we do it'll be in the fall and I'll let you know. Tomato plants in here are doing well, keeping them well watered. These just got hit with hydrogen peroxide. Did a video a couple days ago on that and they got their second round. So this is the question I've been getting a whole lot is how often do I spray? If I'm spraying prevention, how often do I spray hydrogen peroxide or A, B, or C? And I can't really answer that for you. Generally speaking for prevention, you know, every 10 to 14 days. But it depends on what your diseases are. If you know you have something big rolling in every year, Maybe you want to preventatively spray every seven days. So it really depends on what's coming in. The most important thing is just to keep a routine. With the hydrogen peroxide, I talked about how often to do that if you have an, uh, kind of an outbreak, which I did, and I'm using eight ounces per gallon. Please check out the video. I'll put it in the video description. Um, always test spray too, even though they work on my garden, other people's garden, you want to test spray. Anyway, it's eight ounces in a gallon of water and I've actually been spraying cucumber plants and watermelons and all kinds of stuff and really testing out that eight ounces. But it's helping my tomato plant. Just built this, needed a place for all my spray bottles. And when I went through and really looked at how many I had, it's crazy, I'll show you. So I built this here. Um, first of all, I put it in here where it's got a place. It'll give a little bit of shade to this area, not enough to really matter. But what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be putting a shade cloth right at fence level, straight back to the fence, and I'm going to shade garden in here. And I want to see how much of a difference that makes. And it, it really can cool the soil temperature uh, underneath by 20 degrees, especially now in July. It's going to be getting up to 90, 100 degrees. I want to see what I can grow. So I built this. I would love to have done a video on it, but I build out of my head um, and kind of just picture things so I don't use a design. But I really like how it turned out. All the shovels get in here, you know, scissors, jute, all that stuff. But look at all the bottles I have. These are backups. Um, I put on there, that's for like vegetation and poison ivy. Fungicides, peppermint oil, another poison, 
Aspirin H2O2. I wanted them to be in one place where I didn't have to leave the garden. I even have ones that I bought for some reason. I'm not even using them. I wanted all the sprays in one place. Spray bot, yeah. The spray containers in one place so I didn't have to keep leaving the yard. I could just come over here, get what I need. I'm keeping the hydrogen peroxide right up there. I'll put in my other stuff. Um, if you put out baking soda, you need to put it in a sealed container because the humidity will cake it up and stuff like that. But I love how this looks. You know, I did put some aluminum foil in a sheeted way in the slopes up there so the water will run off. But I'm not, you know, expecting this to be waterproof. But I really like, you know, how it turned out. And these are just fencing pieces of wood. They're like $2.50 each. I find that's the easiest way. Look, here's a bonus. Ah, that was a squash bug. I missed it. Butternut squash doing really well. Grew it here last year. I was talking about it. I'm going to be doing a trellising video right after this one, just showing how everything's growing up on here. But I'm sticking with what works. The butternut did amazingly well here. The acorn squash did well here. But I'm leaving space throughout the garden. This is kind of, I'm not sure where that's going to go. It was right in that space there. Cleaned out all my turnips going to clean this space out. It's all pretty much ready for harvesting. I will put in new waves of root crops and I may be putting them in under the shade cloth. We're just going to see how it goes. Sadly, three of my kale in here got something in the bottom of the stem and it just rotted them. So there's only one left, but that's okay. Cause what I found was that I only need this kale, the kale right in here and a little bit over there. And that's plenty. Even though I've been dealing with white flies on this, I'm eating it fast enough, I'm moving through it fast enough that I can really manage it. Keep in mind the succession planting. Here are some cucumbers. That's part of my second wave. They're getting to size and they will just fill up this whole area. So let's start. Now let's go over to those tomatoes. I've been talking, I've been really tending to them. I like the way the garden looks. I left everything on the ground. This is how a garden looks. You know, I didn't clean up everything to make it look perfect. This may dry. <laughs> I might get it into a wheelbarrow and get rid of it. Grass is coming up, but the weed eater, weed whacker is the best thing that I've been just using regularly. Instead of worrying about pulling everything, I'll just come through and knock this back. Eventually it'll be fine. I rambled my way through and forgot to talk about trellising. So this is old fencing. It's just a coil. I'm leaving that there. That was going to be for melons. That's chicken wire, bamboo posts. You just kind of weave the bamboo poles through there and that makes a nice lightweight trellis. I'm using ladder mesh right in there. That's just for my potato vines, sweet potato vines to kind of grow up. Allows me to get under there, kind of manage pests and disease. I'm using the ladder mesh right here. I usually get it at Home Depot, but it's not in every uh, Home Depot. So you have to kind of look around for it. Stepping inside real quick. This is concrete mesh right in here in the U shape. And that's what you lay down where you're pouring concrete to give the concrete some uh, extra support. Closer example is right over here. And I just lay it on lay it on its side. That'll be perfect for cucumbers. Lots of tomato cages and stuff that most of us use. This is shelving for closets. I get that at Home Depot or Lowe's. This one's like 10 feet tall or something like that. You can get the shorter version. You'll see these as we're walking through the garden when we go back to the tour. They work really, really well. I just use some decking posts to secure them or I use T posts and U posts throughout. The butternut squash and acorn squash, U-posts. This is just a fencing roll. It'll be perfect for the acorn squash. Now, butternut gets out of control. That's a piece of the concrete mesh going all the way up there. Two plants are in there, but I also have fence along here. So I will just kind of weave the butternut all over. So you have to really think about how big your plant gets. Butternut squash, just vines and vines and vines. So it kind of goes crazy. I have lots of cattle panel arches which you know we'll take a quick look at and you'll see them as we walk through the garden but it's you know just a nice arch i have my beans growing up through there i'm going to do a longer video on all of these right after this cattle panel arch really makes a great trellis you'll see that as we go through over on this side you know ladder that's a deck railing that i put on a um, hinge some stuff I made out of wood. You just cross the wood over right in the next. 
tie it off that makes a great trellis so you get the idea I don't even know what this is but this is just the ladder mesh weaved through a six-foot pole I just nail it into the ground press it into the ground and my watermelon will grow up there but you can see lots of different options I really recommend you know rambling wise to grow vertically you can find all this stuff sometimes at roadside people throw away their closet pieces you can go to thrift stores these are just t-posts and u-posts and wire I like using the wire because it'll last really for years and years instead of jute which rots and breaks I weave the tomatoes through that tie it to the post it'll be a nice wall of tomatoes right there but there's so many options all right let's get back to the tour and you'll see these as we're walking around those are pole beans growing up a couple of um, poles and a dead tree these are three tomato plants these are Matt's wild cherry they're coming up and this is part of a series I'm doing for budget gardening and those are the zucchini plants up 10 days that's what they look like that's why you don't have to spend a lot of money on zucchini and squash transplants because the seeds germinate quickly the plants grow quickly I'll be doing the second part of this soon but I wanted to show people you can just grow really in a three foot two and a half foot wide space maybe eight feet long and you can grow squash tomatoes and green beans the tomatoes have all been pruned that's what you see on the ground as we walk by tomatoes are coming in bottom prune them up these all got their second round of hydrogen peroxide yesterday the leaves look great everything is nice and green so I have nine in here I didn't find any problems that I'm really worried about if you grow brandy wines these are the potato leaf they look like a potato leaf but they're not a potato this is the standard leaf of a tomato plant that's a potato leaf anyway the brandy wines are really susceptible to fungus so I'm really keeping an eye on them with the H2O2 spray the hydrogen peroxide and they look really good after a couple of days if it looks like the leaf spot is leaving my plants alone I will hit this with um, probably baking soda just an antifungal to give the plants a little bit of protection but they look so good this is another brandy wine this is the pink brandy wine the other one was I think a red brandy wine keeping the base open so I have airflow trellis them all up so take a look at this area I'm also affiliated with Vajega metal raised beds that's in my video description they look beautiful I redesigned this area everything is doing really really well peppers peanuts right in there those are cucumbers from seed that's wave three actually cantaloupe I'm gonna let fall over and kind of just grow on the ground watermelon from seed I'm gonna thin that down to two plants that's doing really well these were the first wave the cantaloupe on this side they're just going crazy right up the trellis going as planned have a watermelon in there already let me take a look at that and they're going to trellis right up here and I'm just going to trellis the cantaloupe down this way the watermelon down this way I will start pruning the ends when there's fruit on there but I'm not overly worried about it the apple tree is doing really well things look they look pretty good my dogs are barking I wonder if I have a visitor showing up here is wave two of my cucumber plants nice dark green I've been spraying this space right here with hydrogen peroxide this is the test area so anytime that you get a spray recipe even if it's for me I appreciate you trusting me test spray so this has gotten two rounds of eight ounces of hydrogen peroxide to a gallon no damage that I'm concerned about I've also been spraying that cucumber plant been spraying some of these uh, jalapenos in there just to see how that goes so far no damage with the Eight, I'm sorry I might have said eight percent it's eight ounces of hydrogen peroxide to one gallon beans are going crazy sunflowers are now well over six feet doing exactly what I wanted I have beans growing through those things are shaping up really nicely over on this side the peppers everything in there are kind of my, my uh, mild hot peppers they are filled with peppers tomatillos back there tomato plants all in here they look pretty good I'm gonna spin around so my shadow doesn't go in. we'll come back up here in a second so the cucumber plant here was my first one and it's doing pretty good I'm gonna hit it with a 
um, fertilizer, water soluble organic fertilizer, let it green up a little bit more. But I've been also soaking this down with the hydrogen peroxide, eight ounces to one gallon, seeing if it does any damage. No damage. I haven't hit it with the peppermint oil, oil yet. I'll be doing that soon. That helps manage uh, spider mites. I'll be doing a video on that. But I've been harvesting cucumbers off of here. You know, and I think, you know, eight ounces of H2O2. I don't know why I keep saying that, but hydrogen <laughs> peroxide in a gallon seems like it's going to work on every plant. But I'm going to again say test spray. Here is another variety of squash looking good. The yellow scallop squash look good. Actually, that's my dogs barking at me because I'm wearing a hat because of the sun and they don't know who I am. Yellow scallop squash look good. This is my replacement zucchini that I dropped in when I pulled the plant out. It's starting to take off. You still have plenty of time to plant cucumbers, zucchini, squash, beans. So this is the area that had the leaf spot. These are double stemmed uh, pruned tomato plants. There's like four, eight, 12, 16, like 28 tomatoes on there. There's my second one is almost ready. The leaf spot is looking like it's under control. I pruned off some of the branches, but this got two rounds of the eight ounces of hydrogen peroxide. So I might give it a third, just in this area. I'm not gonna do all the tomato plants. This is my other grouping, but every plant in here got two waves of the spray. The third wave is probably just gonna go where it was mostly showing up here and right on that plant. These are the cherry tomatoes. They're starting to form tons of fruit. You can see some of the grape tomatoes right down there, but in a matter of maybe 10 days or so, I'm just gonna have a ton of tomatoes. They are just doing so well with the heat. And that's something I've been talking about a lot, is the heated soil, 60 degrees, the root zone, really accelerates the growth of your plants. So you have time to plant many things. Peppers would be tough, eggplant would be tough. Determined tomatoes, maybe you could get them in there. Blackberries, I have friends coming over. That's who I thought maybe the dog was barking at. I'm trying to give these away now. I've eaten so many, still more that aren't ripe, but they're absolutely delicious. And you really want to pick a blackberry when it gets a little bit dull. That one's, I can't tell how dull they are here because the sun's coming in, but they want to just pop right off really easily. Like that one just fell off. That's when they're their sweetest. Just blackberries everywhere. Still got to get in there and harvest them. This is what I eat just about every day when I'm out in the garden. Blueberries are coming in. They look pretty good. There's still unripe blueberries, but I've got the first wave. Stuff looks pretty lush. Let me show you something over here. Now oh, we had a cut so I could yell at the dog. She's going nuts. Hey, Karen. All right, so my neighbor is over. Karen, you're going to be in video if you're not careful. So let me show you the problem over here. You can walk behind me and pick the blackberries. I just walked by there. You just want to get the ones that are really popping off gently. If you tug on them. Right. Yeah, and then the blueberries are right in there. Okay. So mixed in here are my bell peppers. I'm having some trouble with these in the sense that a disease showed up that I normally don't get. But I sprayed this with hydrogen peroxide. They look like they're recovering. They're going to get a water soluble organic fertilizer and water soluble means that nitrogen and nutrients will be immediately available. But a lot of new leaves are coming back. I'll clean this up at some point, mulch down there, but they're starting to take off again. But it's just been really strange weather, heat, cold, humidity, rain, all kinds of stuff. And the plants are kind of suffering for it. Shishito, second wave in there, just loaded. They're all gonna get put on the grill at some point. I mean, look at all those. Let me switch angle here. The shishito pepper grows really well. And these are really good grilled with a little fish oil on them. Some plants to go in, doing a video on those eggplant that look like they're past their prime. Just show people how you can actually save them. They're gonna take off. And the strawberry towers, looking pretty good with all this heat. You just want to make sure you keep watering the containers. And a lot of my plants have these holes. That's the Japanese beetle. So I'm not even worried about that. I'm just going to kind of let them do their thing. But just take a look at how big the plants are getting. Sunflowers look really cool. Just want to keep this video shorter. 
Thanks so much for watching. Please check out my seed shop at therustedgarden.com. And the whole key to prevention is just picking that time frame. Every 7 to 10 days, 10 to 14 days. Sooner, if you know you get diseases coming in. A little bit longer if you're just kind of maintaining the safety of your plants and nothing big is kind of rolling in. And then if you have an outbreak with the hydrogen peroxide, it's really every two or three days for three cycles. You just kind of have to get kind of into the swing of things and come up with a plan for your garden. All right, again, thanks for watching. And if you do donate, please consider donating to the Community Ecology Institute. That's uh, the program that has the initiative Freetown Farm, where I love to volunteer. Thanks for watching.